Welcome. My name is Russ Siegenberg. I'm a psychologist and a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I've written a manual called The Next 12 Steps to Help Those with Pornography and Sexual Addictions Problems. Now, this is a blended approach geared to members of the LDS faith that utilizes both clinical and spiritual methodologies. I've been running a group for eight years now on a nonprofit basis. And since these methods have proven effective, I wanted to find a way to share them with more people, hence this series of videos. As the name implies, uh, this uh, manual and, and teachings are meant to augment and not replace the church's 12 steps program. The manual has 12 chapters. Each chapter is based on an important principle of recovery. Uh, since experience teaches more deeply than any other method, at the end of each chapter there's an action plan that gives some exercises to practice so as to learn the concepts more deeply. And people that practice those concepts in that way do uh, learn at a much higher rate than those who don't do that. The overall aim of the Next 12 Steps program is to teach people to walk in the ways of the Lord and develop a spiritual lifestyle that brings real peace and joy. Main components of recovery could be likened to the three legs of a stool. Uh, as you know, a stool doesn't hold up well if it's missing one leg. The three legs are the Holy Spirit and the Atonement, light and truth, so that our thoughts as we think correct thoughts, and then positive living skills so we have a happy and joyous lifestyle. And each one is important and provides stability and helps people have a lasting and profound recovery. first principle in the manual is faith in Jesus Christ. It's through faith in Jesus Christ that we can receive the power and knowledge to overcome addictions. The Lord can be a pillar of strength and a fountain of wisdom as we demonstrate the humility to reach out to Him, recognizing that one's life is out of control and deciding to rely upon the Lord as a first step in the recovery process. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. So the Lord will support us as we try to strengthen ourselves, learn new skills, exercise faith uh, that he loves us and will help us to find those tools we need to recover. Human beings being the way they are, we like to experiment in life and so we'll try different shortcut methods to find pleasure and perhaps thinking it's, we're going to find happiness. One of the great things about sinning and, and struggling is that we get to choose. And agency is the most important principle of the gospel. 2 Nephi 2.27 says, Wherefore men are free according to the flesh, and all things are given them which are expedient unto man. They are free to choose liberty and eternal life through the great mediator of all men, or to choose captivity and death according to the captivity and power of the devil. For he seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. I want to talk about why people get addicted. One of the sad things is when people are young, they don't have the experience to understand the final outcome of their behaviors. And so they think that there won't be any big consequence if they do something that's against the commandments. As long as they don't get caught, as long as nothing seems to happen, they think it's not a problem and they can quit at any time. Well, this is Satan's plan because one of the things that happens is that people learn, start learning to use the addictive behavior or substance to help them manage their emotions. And this is where addiction starts. As people try to cope with stress and get their inner needs met through the addictive behavior. Uh, some of the things that human beings get from many of the addictive habits, such as alcohol, drugs, sex, food, is pleasure, distraction from emotional pain, excitement, and relaxation. The more you use, the more you get dependent on it, and the more you have to use. So some of the signs of addictions are repeated unsuccessful attempts to stop or control the strong desires to perform the behavior, preoccupation with the behavior at the cost of other more important activities, a need to increase the intensity, frequency, or variety in order to achieve the same effect, and one experiences significant anxiety, restlessness, or irritability if unable to engage in the behavior. A lot of times people with an addiction will struggle to admit it to themselves and it's only when they get serious and try to stop and find out that they can't that they begin to realize that truth. One of the sad things about addictions is people become quite dependent on the behavior and they can't live life in a normal way very well and they watch other people moving ahead 
and they know they're stuck and it's it's disheartening and sad and certainly I've always had a lot of compassion for those that come to my groups seeing the struggles they go through which they don't want to be in. So faith provides power. Joseph Smith uh, noted there are three basic levels of faith. Uh, one, believing God exists. Two, believing that he loves us personally. And three, believing that he's perfect in all his attributes. I think it's especially important for addicts to recognize that God still loves you. He understands that people will make mistakes in life and what he wants is us to come to him. He wants us to turn to him with full purpose of heart and move on in our lives. And he'll always be there for us when we're struggling. I want to talk about grace in the atonement. Alma 7 verses 11 and 12 explains some of this. And I think sometimes people misunderstand these verses. So verse 11 says, He shall go forth suffering pains and afflictions and temptations of every kind. And this that the word might be fulfilled, which saith he will take upon him the pains and the sicknesses of his people. Well, sometimes people uh, mistakenly think that means he's going to take all our pains away because he's suffered. Uh, and I suppose he could do that, but it doesn't seem to be the plan of salvation. And I've asked people in my groups if they've ever prayed that the Lord would remove the burden of their addiction, and everyone says they've prayed, but no one's ever said that's happened, at least not in a quick way. So let's talk about what actually works in terms of grace. So verse 12 says, And it will take upon him death, that he may loose the bands of death, which bind his people, and he will take upon him their infirmities, that his bowels may be filled with mercy, according to the flesh, that he may know according to the flesh how to succor his people according to their infirmities. So as the Lord suffered the various things that Heavenly Father set upon him uh, while he was on earth, the Savior gained experience and knowledge. So the idea is he knows how to help us. One of the best examples of how the Lord helps us is uh, missionaries that had to learn a foreign language. So when I've talked to people, I ask them, well, did you learn the foreign language in two weeks? Did you have to work hard? And they always say, yeah, it took a while and I had to work hard. But then I'll ask them, did you feel like the Lord was helping you? And they always endorse that idea and say, yeah, the Lord helped me. The Lord will help us to accomplish the things we want. He won't do it for us because we couldn't grow. It begins the plan of salvation. Elder Bednar talked about this. He said the two dimensions of the atonement, redeeming and enabling, are connected and complementary. They both need to be operational during all phases of the journey of life. Thus, the enabling part of the atonement strengthens us to do good and be good and serve beyond our own individual desire and natural capacity. The redeeming power uh, helps us to be forgiven of our sins. So Elder Bednar added, pray and seek for strength to change your circumstances rather than praying for your circumstances to be changed. We'll become agents who act rather than objects that are acted upon. Some examples of, the, of this, the power of the atonement, although it's uh, important to recognize that President Nelson uh, kind of warned us about misusing the, the word atonement and he reminded us that Jesus does these things and Jesus helps us according to certain conditions. So we're to think about Nephi building the ship. He had to work, he had to plan, but the Lord assisted him. He, he got revelation as he was busily engaged. Other examples from the Book of Mormon would be Moroni building forts. It had never been done before among that people. And then, of course, he put armor on his soldiers. But all those things came because he was thinking about those things. And so the Lord will step in and, and assist us in thinking about things in a different way and strengthening us emotionally and even physically as we're uh, trying to achieve good goals. Mosiah 3.19 says, For the natural man is an enemy to God and has been from the fall of Adam and will be forever and ever unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit and putteth off the natural man and becometh a saint through the atonement of the Lord, of Christ the Lord, and becometh as a child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord seeth fit to inflict upon him, even as a child does submit to his father. We know that as we sin and stray from the Lord, we need the power of the Spirit to help us to regain our strength. And so it's important for people to establish good spiritual habits and get closer to the Lord and be willing to do things the Lord way. And, and I ask people to become a hundred percenter where they're fully engaged in the recovery process because unless they are, it's difficult to escape the clause of addiction. So one of the things that we'll be talking a lot in this uh, course is the concept of spirituality. Spirituality 
has two different components. One component would be uh, religious activities such as prayer and scripture study going to the temple. But there's another aspect. President McKay said, Christ has asked us to develop the spiritual within us. Man's earthly existence is but a test as to whether he'll concentrate his efforts, his mind, his soul upon things which will contribute to the comfort and gratification of his physical nature, or whether he'll make as his life's purpose the acquisition of spiritual qualities. President Benson had these words to say, the road lies before us is clearly marked, the means to travel it are richly provided. We must follow the path set for us by the Son of God and all that we desire, think, and do. You can see how all encompassing that is. We all understand the act part, but to change our desires and thoughts uh, requires quite a bit of learning and practice. Elder Oaks said, to become pure in heart, to achieve exaltation, we must alter our attitudes and priorities to a condition of spirituality. We must control our thoughts, we must reform our motives, and we must perfect our desires. So he reaffirmed what uh, President Benson had to say about spirituality. So in conclusion, we need to be prepared to work uh, and set about like we had to do it all on our own, but knowing that Heavenly Father is going to st step in and pave the way for us. Because Heavenly Father doesn't like to act like a magic genie, except in very special circumstances. He did part the Red Sea, but he may not do that for us. His perfect plan of salvation requires struggle and growth. He wants us to learn new concepts and new ways of being and, and get excited about the change process. And I think he has a rule that he will not do for us what we can learn to do for ourselves. So this requires patience, where we want him to help us more usually than he's willing to do. But we can count on his help every step of the way he's watching our progress. And so it's ever important to, to rely on him and believe that, that he will support us. We also want to develop skills for positive living. Uh, some of those skills are going to include uh, self-discipline, impulse control, managing thoughts and emotions, effective communication, building character traits, such as honesty, empathy, patience, and love. This seems like a lot, but we, we're gonna be living our life anyway. And if someone is practicing small goals, in a few years, they can be quite accomplished at those goals. And if they do nothing, because it seems too overwhelming, they'll be nowhere in a few years. So our success comes from those small little goals we're working on each day. And, and this is, God's greatest miracle is changing our nature. Mo Moses 1.39 says, For behold, this is my work and my glory, to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. And he's very good at what he does. So at the end of each chapter, there's an action plan. So for chapter one, there's four assignments. First is sort of a mental one. Consider if you have the faith to reach out to the Savior for assistance in your recovery. Two, begin reading the scriptures daily. I call prayer and scripture study in the morning, putting our armor on. I also ask people generally in my groups to read a page or two in the manual so that they can get through that and uh, have regular and individual prayers. And the fourth step is to add some skills that you need to develop to the list uh, that's called building my personal ship and then pray for the Lord's help with those goals. Well, thank you for attending here and, and listening this first uh, session and hope you'll join us for the rest of them.